All right, well, good evening, everyone. I don't can't quite see who all is online right now, but if you're with us, I'm glad you are. Uh, just giving this a shot this evening, these virtual vespers, to have some connection uh, with the congregation on Wednesday evenings, as we've been doing in the past. I I trust in the middle of all of this oddness that. You all are well, you're hunkered down at home, taking care of yourselves, taking care of your family, and that these can be some brief moments of respite in the midst of all of this strangeness, this uh, uncharted territory that we're all exploring together. Before we begin any sort of time of prayer tonight, I, I did want to share just a few uh, announcements with you as we're doing this. Uh, first, we still are suspending services for the foreseeable future, for at least the next few weeks as we wait this out, as we try to flatten the curve, as we practice our social distancing to, to make sure this virus is contained and doesn't continue to spread. Um, we're hoping and praying, and I hope you'll join us too in praying, that we'll be back to some sense of rhythm and normalcy by... Uh, mid or early summer and just continue praying that most of all the people stay safe people are healthy I also uh, want to just remind you that your staff is still in and out of the congregation in and out of the church building as we're working uh, to sort of guide this this church through this weird and new time and and one of the things that, that that means for us is as you can see now I mean I'm here in my office we're using the church's internet, it's electricity, uh, utility bills are still coming, people still uh, are doing their jobs, and, and so as we think about that, the hard thing we're thinking about now is how do we normalize giving? How do we normalize our, our gifts to the church? And so there are a number of ways you can do that. You've probably gotten a letter from me, you've seen it in the MailChimp campaign that went out Sunday, that you can mail your checks here, mail your offering into the church at our address, We've installed an exterior drop box in the buildings that keep it safe. If you need to just get out of the house, want to drive it by the church, drop it in the box, we can do that. We also have an online giving link that's active now on our website that goes here to the church. You can click on that, select an amount. It's pretty easy, in fact, to do that. You can even set up a monthly donation that way. Um, so just be mindful, be praying about that, how you continue to give in these times. And also, um, as far as our worship services are going, I hope you most of you were able to receive the the email that came out on this next week's that's coming. And in just a few minutes, when this is over, we'll be recording uh, some new sermons. So you'll get to see me again, whether whether you like it or not. Uh, you'll get to see me as we are uh, preparing some new sermons. And Pat and Linnell have been working hard to sort of line up some some song videos. We don't want to risk them getting out and having to travel here, so they've been doing that. And, and those of you with children and youth already know the, the work that Nikki's been doing to prepare packets for our kids and to get things out uh, so that in this time we can still stay somewhat connected as a church. I hope, too, by now that you've heard from your deacon, uh, whoever that may be, that you've heard from them, that they've been able to make contact. And I want to say as your pastor, look, I know it's get it's it's hard to be sort of stove up at church or stove up at home all day and, and during the week. But if you need someone to to run any errands for you, if you need something like that, feel free to contact your deacon. Contact us here at the church. We understand that there's some it's an anxious time and you may not want to get out and you may need someone to help you do that. And we'll find ways however we can to to help with that. But we want to stay in touch. We want to stay connected to one another. And I think. Um, I think this is the best way we can do that and still uh, stay safe and stay home. Other than that, um, as far as Sundays go, we're still sort of experimenting, playing. Hope you'll bear with us in that. And, and honestly, I hope we don't get too used to it. I hope about the time we get it figured out, we won't need it anymore and we'll be able to, to join one another in person again. But uh, if we become experts at this stuff, then good for us. But I don't know if that'll happen. Um, but tonight, uh, what I want to do as we continue, or as we try this out, as we try out these uh, virtual Vespers, I want to use uh, what's been something for me that's been helpful for the last 12 years. Last week was uh, the 12th anniversary of my ordination. Didn't really think about that in the midst of all this. 
Um, but one of the things, one of the resources I've used is this book right here. It's called A Guide to Prayer for Ministers and Other Servants from Upper Room Press. You've probably seen me use it before. And I want to use it just as a, a, a guide for our service uh, as we meet together in these virtual Vespers. Also, I'm, I think I have it enabled here, but if you'd like to in this time, maybe leave a prayer request for us and, and keep confidentiality and those sorts of things in mind, but you can add that in the comment as we're here together so we all know what to pray uh, about with you and for you. But as we enter into that time, I, I want to begin with this prayer of invocation. O God, our Father, renew our spirits and draw our hearts to thyself, that our work may not be to us a burden but a delight, and give to us such love to thee as may sweeten all our obedience. Help us that we may serve thee with the cheerfulness and gladness of children, delighting ourselves in thee and rejoicing in all that is to the honor of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I also want to read a passage of scripture this evening that I, I think is fit for our time. It's from uh, Paul's epistle to the Philippians, and I'm finding myself more and more lately coming back to Paul's words to that church at Philippi. I, I think because well, this is Paul's most beloved church, most beloved epistle, and his words, I think, are, are quite deep and, and moving in that letter. And these words from chapter 4, verses 4 through 9, I think are fitting for our time. He says there, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now I want us to enter a time of prayer, uh, guided specific prayer. And as you're at home or wherever you are right now, as you're thinking about these things, I want us to first focus our prayers around the church. And I don't just mean our church here at Williams, but the capital C church. This morning I was on a Zoom call with some friends who were ministers and we talked about everything from how do you do this online stuff to well, how do you do funerals now? What about weddings? Friends in other denominations who are asking, how do you anoint the sick if you can't touch them? How do you do communion if you have to have social distancing? What does this mean for us right now? So I want you to be mindful, prayerful about our church and the church universal. It's an uncharted territory for all of us. How do we do this thing? What does it mean now to be the church, to do church? And I want you to be mindful of others. I know that sounds, I don't know, sounds obvious. But we're in this weird time where decisions are put before us that frankly shouldn't be put before us. Do we sacrifice our care for others, for some other good that we may think is there? To be mindful of others. Those, especially now as we are seeing so many institutions and things shut down, where we begin to realize just who are essential people? And what does that mean? to be essential to our ways of life, to be prayerful, mindful of those people as we seek to navigate our own sort of isolation as those others who have to keep going with their day-to-day -day routines and jobs, to be praying for them. And then finally, to pray for ourselves, to pray for yourself. How, do you, how are you dealing with this? I know it's, it's odd, it's a bit different. Maybe, maybe when you first got the news that you had to stay home for a week, for two weeks, that the idea was kind of charming. Hey, I get to be at home, I get to play with the kids. But after three days of the same reruns on Netflix or the same TV shows, the same movies, the same whatever, or the days when it's rained and you've had to be inside the house, how are you dealing? 
What's going on? Ask God to just give you some patience. Be mindful of your own health, both mentally and physically, where you are and what's going on, and to be in prayer at all times, to find some time in your day, your week, to carve out for prayer. And so those are the three things I want you to think about, to be praying for the church, the church universal, praying for others, and praying for yourself. And I want us to just take a moment to do that, and then I'll voice a prayer for us, and then I want to offer just a, a brief reflection for the day. So let's take some time to pray. Lord, we ask now in this strange season that you be with us, that you make us mindful of those around us, make us mindful of the ways that we can be wise and practice this social distancing, this safety, this Lord, odd stuff that we never thought was a part of our vocabulary, a part of what we do or who we are, or that you help us help us in these days and weeks ahead and God we lift up especially the church is we're not only here at Williams but around the world we try to navigate what it's like to be the church without being able to be present with one another without doing the things we're so used to doing help us to find new expressions and new ways to be the body of Christ help us Lord to stay connected to look after one another and Lord for those who are on the proverbial front lines of all of this, God, our health care workers, those who Lord, our first responders, those in the way, those who are most vulnerable, God, we pray for them, that your hand will be with them, that you will be there to protect them, that you'll be there, Lord, to, to help them serve, and that when this is over, we don't forget them, that we be mindful of just how valuable they are to us, all of those that we've called essential in this time. And God, I pray for all of those who are listening right now. Lord, I know it's hard. It's hard in this time to figure out what's going on. I know in its, its best moments it feels a little anxious but hopeful. And at its absolute worst it feels scary and almost apocalyptic. And God, we trust that you're there. We trust your presence. We ask that you make us mindful each day each moment that we're in this season. Lord, that you help us to gather together in times like these, whether it's through Facebook, whether it's through phone calls, that your spirit is there calling us together. We thank you for that, Lord, and we look forward to the coming day when we will be together again in worship and in times of prayer. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. One final thing that I wanted to share with you is a lot of you know we've been going through Foster's book. You didn't think you'd get away a Wednesday night without Foster. Um, but we came to the last chapter, and I didn't want to leave us hanging without that. And ironically, maybe, Foster's last chapter is titled Celebration. It's hard to find things to celebrate right now, I think, when we're, I don't know, so anxious, so worried about what's to come. But as many of you know, um, right before, right after we had our last church service, I was able to defend my doctoral thesis, and there was something to celebrate. Even though it wasn't in the usual fashion, it was at home with my family, and maybe better for that. What are you able to celebrate in this time? Maybe you finally got around to reading that book that you've been wanting to read. Maybe you finally got around to cleaning out that closet because you've been at home all day and there was nothing else to do. I'll tell you one thing that happened in our family just yesterday that was exciting and worth celebrating. We came here to the church so that I could upload some of my paperwork for, my, for finishing my degree. And as we were here, we let the boys ride around on their bikes in the church parking lot. 
We took Cole's training wheels off, and for the first time ever, he took off as natural as anything, riding his bike without training wheels. In fact, I think he's half the age I was when I learned how to ride a bike. That's something to celebrate. It's a milestone of sorts for childhood, and we celebrated that with Cole. We celebrated that with him even today as he rode his bike some more. What can you celebrate even in the midst of all of this? Have you looked outside today? It's gorgeous outside. Remember when all the, before this happened, we all talked about how much it rained and it wouldn't stop raining, and now, now it's raining pollen. But still, things to celebrate as the flowers bloom, as the grass grows, as we have more time with family and friends. So I know it's a weird discipline to think about now, but what are you able to celebrate? What can you celebrate in this time when we're so distant from one another and yet so close still in the midst of all of this? I hope you'll think about that. I hope you'll reflect on those things. And as Paul said to his beloved Philippians, find a way to rejoice. Again, I say rejoice. As we come to the close of our time here together, I, I want to end with a benediction from that same prayer book. Same prayer book on the same day and it's simple short and to the point be bound to Christ for this day and always amen until we see each other again whether it's here or in person in our sanctuary or wherever it may be I hope you'll remember the same truth I tell you every Sunday that God loves you and there's nothing you can do about it and so, friends, even in this time, what will we do about that? Amen.